Alright guys, so um, today I'm gonna be just showing you guys some of the things you should know about Sprite that I think would be helpful. Um, so, uh, first I'm gonna be showing you guys some of the advantages and disadvantages of the D.Va version versus the Beckoning Beast version and the Nimble Beaver version, right? Um, you guys are probably wondering like, um, what the hell? Like, what, what, why? Like, what version is good? What version is bad? Especially if you're entering the European Championship and you're like still undecided on what version to play. Um, first of all, you have to make a, an analysis on the meta. And what I mean by that is that when you enter European Championship, you have to come with some sort of um, guess or some sort of guesstimate on what you think the ratios of hand traps and what you think the ratios of breakers will be. So what I mean by that is that if you think that the tournament is going to be filled with a bunch of board breakers and people are going to be playing hella board breakers, then the D.Va version is very powerful. But if you think a lot of people are going to be Gerald playing hand traps, then the beckoning version is very, very good. Okay. So I'm going to turn off the love box. Um, give me a second. Dr. Underscore Strange Joe just subscribed. Thank you guys for the Go tier one. Away ads. I'm trying to peep the GUU. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. Okay, I'm just gonna pause it for now. Okay. So okay, for sure. yeah. So yeah, I'm here with Nesh right now, but let's let's talk first about like uh the dark beckoning beast line. So usually what you do is you go dark beckoning beast, right? And if your opponent has ogre as their only hand trap, uh the beckoning beast line offers some versatility in beating it. So you go beckoning beast, grab, opening gate, search another beckoning beast. You'll do another normal summon, okay? Uh, that effect does not activate, by the way. Uh, but you have to declare that you're using... Like, that the extra additional normal summon is a result of Beckoning Beast, just so you're aware. And then, afterwards, if you want to play around Ogre, you can you turn one of them into an Almirage. Um, use Opening Gate. Non-classified as a continuous, yep. Non-classified effect as a continuous, yep. So then you go Opening Gate pitch a random card from your hand and you're gonna try to bring back beaver okay at this point your opponent has to ogre this if they do if they do not ogre this um they're gonna be in deep shit okay um here's the scenario what happens if they don't ogre this you bring back beckoning beast you overlay both of them you have a gigantic that beats all mirage now 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 that they ogre this this card dies and what you can still do is you can use both of them to make elf use elf to bring back the beckoning beast and then overlay Elf and Beckoning Beast in order to make Gigantic. Use Gigantic's effect to attach the Beckoning Beast. And you're going to be summoning um, Sprite Blue. Blue will get you the other can, Jet. Jet will then grab you either Starter or Smashers. And then at this point, you can make like IP. Um, you can make like IP, for example, uh, with these two. Um, or you make an or, or you make elf. You make another elf. It's probably better to make another elf because then you can like get follow up and have smashers as an interruption still, um, which is nice. So you can go like elf, bring back a card like blue. Then you have like or no, you're supposed to bring back jet because then you get starter next turn, and then you have like smashers to, like you know cook your opponent. Okay, yo Sam, thank you for the raid. So this is like through one ogre, which against every other version of the deck where they only open one card, you would probably get cooked, because obviously if you open Diva by itself. Um, you would lose to one ogre, um, and I mean, I think I think you can clearly see how. Uh, essentially, if you go normal summon diva, special another diva, overlay with gigantic, you get ogre and you get pretty much get cooked. Okay, so what does this mean? Okay, well, if we recognize that like the beckoning beast is way better at playing through hand traps, then why doesn't everyone just play the beckoning beast version, right? Well, I think it's not as simple as that. the The, the main important thing you need to understand is that the diva package has some sort of Advantages. Okay, here's the first advantage. I can shifter my opponent. Um, or not even shifter my opponent. It allows you to play shifter and then diva by itself. Um, diva by itself is an OTK. D D oh, diva plus diva diva effect diva effect attendance blue chat effect cash shark. Yeah, diva by itself kills your opponent. Yeah, diva by itself kills your opponent. Um, but but anyways, the um. The, the thing is, if anyone plays Board Breaker, the reason why D.Va is really good is because of this, right? You go D.Va, summon another D.Va, and then you go Special Blue. You go Blue Effect, and that gets you Jet. Now, at this point, uh, you can Special Jet, and then you'll get the Starter, or you'll get Smashers, okay? And I'll, I'll explain the main difference between the two. 
But then you can use Diva and one of the names to make Helk. Then use Helk to summon Ash, right? You know, obviously your opponent, for some reason, doesn't play um, Board Breaker. Like, they're playing Board Breakers. So, th this stuff just resolves. That's why, like, you don't get punished by this, okay? Then, what you can get to do is you can get to use uh, Helk and Diva. Make Gigantic. Use Gigantic effect. You summon the Swap Frog. Right, and then you do swap. This is this is how you should be doing the combo. Uh, you then you bounce the ash back to your hand. Uh, you'll use the the swap and the jet. Make elf, reborn back swap, swap effect, send another swap, and then that gets you. It gets you Ronin Tonin. Um, Ronin to, Ro, it gets you totally awesome, which is two interruptions with elf. Plus smashers or starters, okay? Depending on what you want. Which is and Ash Blossom. And Ash Blossom. Right? So it's like you get Ash, double toad negate, and then either the the interruption off starter or the interruption off smashers. So it's a total of one, two, three, four it's four interruptions. Um but the the important part about the interruptions are that they're diverse. They're like spread out, right? So what I mean by that is they're interruptions that are in the back row and in the hand. And they're not just interruptions just on the field. Well, why does that matter? Well, for the obvious reason is because of like cars like Super Poly, Dark Ruler, the all the breakers, right? Um, so and by and by the way, the another thing that you need to know is that like uh I would not use totally awesome in standby phase, to be honest. Um because if my opponent's on super poly, I just like I would I would be in a lot of trouble. Especially if they don't hand trap me at all. If my opponent does not hand trap me at all. And it's game one. They're not going to have cards like Alpha. They're not going to have cards like Cyber Dragon. They're not going to have cards like those type of cards. So I, in game ones, I'll be honest with you, I'm I'm probably not activating Toad Effect. And because I just don't want, I auto, like I would auto lose to one Super Poly. I'm not even capping. So you're probably wondering like, well, Pack, how how does how does one Super Poly cook you? Okay. Well, let's let's think about it. Okay. I'll show you. Uh, effect of Totally Awesome. Detach my Ronin Tonin. Okay. I'm going to summon the... The dupes of frogs. Okay, my opponent's gonna be like, attempt to enter battle phase. I'm gonna be clueless and be like, yeah, sure, battle phase is fine. <laughs> We're now in battle phase. Okay, and I'm like, uh, anything? He's like, yeah, super poly. Super poly, my dupe, am I totally awesome? Summons Garua, and then Garua beats over elf because it's, I'm in battle phase. I can't use elf to bring back totally awesome. And now I lost all, almost all of my interactions. And then my, my opponent has a Guru on the board, right? So, so it's like, like, you know, this is like very bad. Like very, very bad. Like very, very bad. So as much as you can get greedy by, you know, as much as you want to get greedy and summon off the sw totally awesome, don't do it, to be honest. Don't do it. I think like game twos and threes, you can do it. Um, but if you know your opponent's on Super Polo, just side that shit out. Like, you're just never summoning off Totally Awesome, to be honest. Unless you're crazy. So, so yeah. So, that's that's another point of interaction you should know. Anyway, so that's, like, the benefit of D.Va. Um, it's that the ability to diversify your interactions uh, by searching a hand trap, okay? It's super underrated, but th that's the benefit of it, right? You get Dark Blood here. I still have Ash, Smashers, Ash, Starter, okay? So, not too shabby, eh? Um, yeah. Um, so, okay. So, this, this, okay. Now, you're probably wondering, like, okay, how is Beaver good? So, Beaver does what Beckoning Beast kind of does, except that when I negate with Totally Awesome, I can add Beaver back to my hand, and next turn, my Beaver can summon a Beaver back from the graveyard. And you're probably wondering, like, well, why is that important? Well, if Totally Awesome adds back Diva in the grave, um... It's not as bad because you will probably have the the third one in your deck, right? Um, so th that's fine. But but like Nimble Beaver is more, it's better because if you draw two divas, then the totally awesome doesn't actually get you follow up with diva, if that makes sense. Um, the other thing to know about Beaver is that if you normal summon Beaver and use this effect, uh, you could actually get build on it because um, it has a potential summon from your graveyard, even if there's no Beaver in your graveyard. That's what, or e even if there's no Nimble Monster in your graveyard. So that's uh, that's like the only other thing. That you should be aware of. But um, 
But yeah, so like, I, I, I mean, I think they have no choice because if they don't bell the beaver, then you make gigantic and then they just get cooked, right? Like, there's an argument in which you can bell the elf effect to bring back Swap Frog if they open only one beaver by itself. Um, but, but yeah, I, I don't know. Bell, Bell's not bad. You can just hold it. Like, like there's a world in which like you go beaver, summon beaver, over the like, gigantic, activate gigantic. They summon, um, they summon Swap, Swap effects, and uh, make make elf, elf effect, bring back Swap. Use chain bell. And it's like not the worst, but but in my opinion, I think Beaver is not that good right now because uh, they once the Shizu cards comes out, Beaver is inherently a lot better in my opinion. But right now, I think the two, the top two are definitely Beckoning Beast and Diva in my opinion. Okay, so so yeah, so that that's like stuff you need to know, like I guess technical play wise with this deck in terms of like, oh, do I play in a Super Poly? Those are things you need to be very cautious of. And the other thing you need to be cautious of is like, how do I set up my interactions as best as possible? To play around cards like break, break board breakers. Now, how do you beat this deck? Right now, the caveat is like a lot of people will be playing against sprites. So I'm gonna teach you guys a little something about how to how to use your hand trap efficiently as possible into this deck. Um, so yeah, Beaver is a diva that didn't believe enough. Exactly. So okay, so let me let me show you how the why certain hand traps are the best hand traps in the game. Okay, let's talk about impermanence. Um. Let's say I open Dark Beckoning Beast. Uh, actually, let's just say I open, like, I guess, the, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. Let's say, like, Diva, Diva Blue, okay? Probably one of the best inter best hands you can open. Okay, my opponent has one Impermanence. And I'm going to show you why Impermanence is so good. Okay? You go Diva Effect, summon another Diva. Um, then you go Special Blue. Uh, a lot of the Bozos would Imperm this Blue. And I'm telling you right now, do not do that. The only time, the only time it's correct to imperm, um, you let blue, you let blue go. The only time it's correct to ever imperm early is to, is when you, if you imperm the jet, if you have dark blue in your hand. If you have dark blue in your hand, you imperm jet. Now people are like, why do you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you not? Imp why would you not imperm like gigantic? Well, bro, if you imperm jet, they're only, w if you imperm the jet. They cannot play around Dark Ruler. If you have opened Dark Ruler and, and, and Imperm, you Imperm the Jet so they cannot grab Smashers or Starter, which means your Dark Ruler will go in. It goes 100% in. And it also doesn't let them get a, a Smashers to beat Garua, Super Poly, and Battle Phase as well. Okay? So, but okay, let's say you open only Imperm by yourself and you're not nice enough. You didn't open Imperm Dark Ruler. You're not that nice. You only open Imperm, right? Now, why is Imperm, I think, in my opinion, the best hand trap of this format? Um, it's, well, because of this scenario. Okay, I'm going to get Jet here. I'm going to use Jet here. I'm going to grab my, my boy Smashers. Or actually, let's grab Starter, okay? Then we go for we go for a Fiber X line. Fiber Effect, Fiber Resolves, Summons Ash Blossom. Now, what do I want to do next? What do I want to do next? Oh, now I'm like, okay, I'm going to go starter, okay? Because right now, I haven't I haven't given my opponent a good opportunity to Ogre yet. I'm not giving them a good opportunity. So if I want to play around Ogre now, what am I going to do? I'm going to... And if I want to play around Ogre and play around Crow on my Swap Frog, what am I going to do now? I'm going to summon my boy Sprite Red, okay? Um, now, at this point, I'm going to starter for, for the red. Yeah, Ogre and Crow. Okay, I want to play around these guys. I haven't given my opponent a good opportunity to use those hand traps. So, in reality, your sequence right now has not given you telltale signs that they do not have those interactions. You have, like, there has nothing you have done that have forced out an Ogre or Crow. So, you don't know if they have it. You They may or may not have it. And you cannot risk getting Ogre on Gigantic. If you get Ogre on Gigantic, the Fiber Summon Ash literally accomplish nothing. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna summon the 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 the, the sprite can red. Okay, now what do I do next? Well, okay, well the next step is I'm gonna overlay these two. Okay, and I'm gonna make gigantic, and then I'm gonna do gigantic effect. Now what's gonna happen? I'm gonna get imperm on this, and I can't do shit about it. Now what is the meta point I'm trying to make here? Well, the meta point I'm trying to make here is everyone will starter for red. They'll never be Five head enough to start her for carrot. Because it's more likely your opponent will have a monster interaction than a spell trap one. So it I studied how people play their sprite hand. 
I studied there. I studied literally how people play around. I, I studied how people play around, play their sprite hand. And in every situation, unless they open blue jet, they will int into impermanence like no tomorrow. And now stop imperming this gigantic. I can't, it actually be, it actually stopped three interruptions. It actually stopped, it actually stopped three interruptions. Okay. Um, and, and, and how is it stopping three interactions? Well, Swap Frog bounces the ashes to your hand. That's one interruption. And not only that, the totally awesome is two negate. So that's three interactions that impermanence by itself be with Diva Blue. Arguably one of the best openers in the sprite tier deck. I mean the sprite deck. Arguably one of the best openers in the deck. And it's getting demolished. Okay. Now... Now, like, you know, like, so, and the thing is, people are saying it's always correct to play around monster hand traps, right? But that's the point. You, uh, you take advantage of the way people sequence their hand. Like, you take advantage of the way people think and the way that the, the average player will be playing or, like, how the, how the majority of people will be thinking. So, making that analysis, understanding that concept and studying how people do their combo... Will will give you so much insight into understanding which hand traps are actually broken, and impermanence is one of the most broken hand traps right now. But no one will ever understand why until they study like the sprite lines. Okay. Now, and and, and then I'll also, I'm also gonna sidetrack a little bit here because I'm gonna talk about something that's really important. A lot of people, um, Gunther and Hani recently did a luxury classroom um, or did a class where they uh, talked about. Um, decks that will be good they showed basically like real deck list decks that like uh, decks that i'm literally going to be taking to this to rio and and in in that session we talked about things like this like things that are actually super like there's no one i i, I guarantee you that you will not find anyone else in the youtube sphere in Yu-Gi-Oh that talks about that type of interaction that i just talked about right there like and and it's because like that information is not readily available unless you really really do a deep dive into understanding like these type of sequences right so i think for the people that are say, say stuff like oh like uh why do you why would you pay for coaching when you can get this stuff for free on youtube is because no one has it out on youtube obviously i'm gonna i'm showing you guys this just to give you some sort of flavor like this is like the the content for the free content that every, i'm giving to everyone but like not, just imagine like the sort of deep dive that they do and I would definitely not discredit any of the stuff that they do in the in the coaching session because to be quite honest, like they really do cover like real stuff, like real goo. And it's it's actually so disappointing to see people talk shit about it, in my opinion. Um, so that so that's just like a small, small I guess little rant I had there. But there is value to coaching, in my opinion. Um, and that's not even talking about from a coaching perspective. But like I know like that it's almost impossible to figure these things out by yourself unless you have a dedicated people a dedicated team around you um to help you figure these things out right so anyways i'm gonna keep continuing talking about like some other stuff now the next hand trap that i think is like absolutely broken is dd crow so you might be wondering like yo why dd dd what dd crow that card is good yeah well let's let's talk about why it's like really really good right so so if your opponent um so if like for example right if your opponent opens like blue and they open like i don't know um i say like beckoning beast i guess i mean beckoning beast has a way to beat crow but you have to do a very specific sequence to beat greedy crow very specific sequence which i can show you i'll show you how to beat crow fuck it i'll show you so you go dark beckoning beast okay grab opening gate opening gate gets another beckoning beast okay um you special this get the get the i oh, actually don't special this yet sorry one second you're gonna make Almirage. Make Almirage. Uh, you're gonna use the effect Summon Back Beckoning Beast. Okay, and you're gonna overlay for a Gin Buster. Okay, this this is like why this is one of the main reasons why when I talk about how why is the Beckoning Beast superior at going first is because at least from a hand trap perspective, is that it could do shit like this. I literally have a way to beat Ogre and a way to beat any monster hand trap right now. Okay. Then I can go special blue, and then I beat oh, I beat the I beat this. Okay, so that's how you that's how you beat it. Okay, but 
let's say hypothetically, I, I like, you know, I'm, I'm like clueless. I don't really know what I'm doing. Okay. Um, and I open like, like something like this. Okay. It's a like game two. It's game two or even game one. I open like, let's say a level two and a blue. Okay. So you go normal summon, normal summon dupe, special blue, and you get jet, right? Then you go special jet. Now, if you, if you think your opponent is on board breakers, what do you search here? If you think, if you think you're, weird, but this is a better fact. If you think your opponent is on board breakers, what does this jet grab you? All right? And, and the answer is smashers. 95% of the time. It's always, it's almost always smashers. Um, because it's like such a, a broken card when you get darker than no more. Okay. So. So, if you think about the sequence afterwards, right? You overlay these two. Um, you can actually still make Amaraj if you want up here. And then, let's say you overlay these two, okay? And then you make Gigantic. Activate Gigantic, okay? Now you summon Swap. You go Swap Effects and Ronin. Okay. Now, you use... Um, you use Swap and Amaraj... You can actually just keep the Amaraj to be honest, but you want you want like your Swap Frog to be on target. But then you go Elf, and you're gonna do what? You're gonna target the the uh, the Swap Frog, right? At this point, um, you have two interrupt. You have two, like this is where Crow really. You can Crow the Swap here, um, and the, I'll be honest. There's like not really a lot of ways in which you get punished. Okay, I'll be honest. Um, because if you let this, if you don't Crow this, then what happens is they go they go Swap, and then you go Swap send another Swap, right? Then you go Ronin effect, and then they crow the Ronin. They crow the Ronin here. That's fine. Um, but but then what what happens is they can make IP down here, and they end on like uh, IP smashes Elf, which is still like, you know, two interruptions. If uh, obviously I open dupe, so you can still summon. Like I'm assuming you don't open dupe, okay? But like like just like any generic level two. But what 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 typically happens here is if you crow the Swap Frog here. Let me put back the other thing. If, if you crow the target of elf on swap here. Wait, let me put back the Ronin Tone in the graveyard. If you crow the target of swap frog here. Obviously, if they didn't have this dupe frog, if they didn't start off with this, they would have no way to bring back Ronin. And then they just pass with elf and, and one smashers. That's it. They lose. and So they lose like two interruptions off this alone. And with just one crow. Because they want they want to play around Dark Ruler, so then you're probably wondering like, okay, so damn by playing around Dark Ruler and searching Smashers, I int really hard into Crow. Well, to be quite frank, a lot of people are be gonna search Smashers to play around Dark Ruler, um, in my opinion, if that's what they think is what the people what the opponent has, right? And and that's why like I actually play I actually play half Breakers half Hand Traps in my Smite deck, because I want to have some Dark Rulers. But I also want to have impermanence and crows because I think like what will happen is I, I think I'm in a, a scenario where like people will know what I'm playing by round one. So like they'll they'll see me have like dark ruler in my graveyard and they'll go tell their friends. And then and, and then after I round five, I play this I play this dude that I heard from his friend that I'm banging dark ruler. And the guy plays around dark ruler, but then I draw my crow, and then like my crow goes in because the dude played around my dark ruler. You know what I'm saying? Like I, that's why like I was thinking I was, I'm like trying to play half and half. Um Basically to beat the leakers, but yeah. But anyways, that's how, that's how one crow is like really really good in my opinion. And then crow is obviously good against tears, so that's like the obvious thing. So I don't really need to talk about that. But that's why crow is really good. Crow is also really good because on your opponent's turn, when you end on like uh, elf plus like totally awesome, right? Um, crow. Even if you draw crow as a six, at least it still trades with elf effect to reborn totally awesome. Okay, and I think that's kind of like fair it's like you know it's a six card that like answers one of the cards in your opponent's side of the board so it's not even not even the worst if you do open it as a six right so that's also the other thing same with um same with uh impermanence because if you imprim elf in draw phase they can't bring back the totally awesome so that's another thing to know <clears throat> um so yeah, so those are sort of like the the things you should know about like hand traps and splite and all that good stuff. Um, now, the thing that the other technical thing that I always get asked is gamma. How the hell? How do you decide when it's correct to play around gamma? All right. 
how do you decide okay let me give you a scenario um use open diva blue okay so in this scenario you open diva blue do you decide to play around gamma in this scenario i would say no i'll tell you why if you go normal if you go normal diva you say no effect and the only other card in your hand is blue and you have three other hand traps okay I, I, if you decide not to use D.Va here, okay, obviously not Ash, but like, cause you know, you can just Ash the Gamma and then play play around stuff. But let's say you have, uh, I don't know, like Dark Wood, I guess, whatever. So like, let's say you have D.Va and you say, okay, no effect. And then you get Gamma, you go special blue, blue effect. Your opponent will Gamma that so fast that you still lose, okay? Now, then you're probably wondering like, okay, when do you decide to, when is it correct to normal D.Va and say no F? When is it correct? Okay, I'll tell you when. When you open up normal, when you open Diva and two sprite names. So let's say you open Diva Blue Jet. Now the same scenario is presented. You go Diva, no effect, and that's okay because when you summon Blue and go Blue F, they're gonna gamma this so fast. Then you can special Jet and still cook them. Okay. Um, and and that's really important. Like this, but because I see so many people. Who think they're like, yo, I'm so 5 head. I'm going to go normal diva, no F. And I'm sitting there playing the pure punk deck with gamma in my hand. I'm like, then they go special blue. And I'm like, gamma? And they're like, okay, pass. And I'm sitting there like, this dude really thought he was 5 head. I'm like, <laughs> like if you normal diva and say no effect, I'm gamming the next thing you summon 99%. Right? So it's like, you have to think about, is it actually 5 head? Does it actually make sense? And... The scenario I'm presenting to you is that, like, it's only correct to not use D.Va on summon if you have two extenders to back it up. Um, so, so just keep that in mind. Like, yeah. That's, that's really important. Like, you might get rewarded because your opponent will be, like... Because I've seen scenarios where, like, you go normal D.Va and the only other card you have is blue in your hand. And your opponent is, like, so clueless. They go special D.Va and the special D.Va is like, yeah, that's fine. Um, but then they go special jet and they're like, ah, oh, I guess I'll gamma jet. And then they're so good. They get comboed on anyways. Cause then you just make a Gantic effect, summon swap, and then you cook them. So, you know, it's, yeah. So, so just don't lose yourself. Like, I think the biggest thing about playing the sprite deck is, uh, too many people psych themselves out trying to play around every hand trap, but they don't understand that in some scenarios, you cannot play around those hand traps. So you have to make that concession. It's very important about that distinction about, you know, understanding Am I able to play around said hand trap? If I if I can, right? Then you should. But you have to understand sometimes you cannot, so you do it, right? Yeah. Some people saying special diva, no effect. Normal diva, no effect. Summon blue, no effect. <laughs> play around Gamma perfectly. Pass. <laughs> oh my god. Don't do that, bro. So um, so yeah, so that's another thing you need to know. Um the um so so in terms of like playing around gamma that that's that's really really important the other thing you should probably know about the sprite deck that will help you is um uh what else is it it's oh oh uh the the opening gate thing so basically some people the the beckoning the ratios of the different engines so in my opinion you could play three beckoning beasts one gate but personally i think I like double opening gates, and the main reason is because you can go opening gate, search beckoning, normal beckoning, search another opening gate, okay? And the reason why that's kind of nice is because, um, oops, sorry, search another opening gate. The reason why that's kind of nice is because you don't lose card advantage, and I believe that in Splite, card advantage is very important, um, uh, because most of your card advantage is interactions, like, when you play Sprite and you play like a hand trap heavy focused deck, which, you know, I've played Prank Kids for like a year. You can't really afford to give up cards in your hand, right? And so, so if you open, um, if you open like, uh, if you play two opening gate, you're able to, um, search another opening gate and then discard it. So you keep, you have to keep the, all the, all the other four cards in your hand. Um, you know, and, and I personally value that. I mean, there's also an argument to like not play it. 
but it's I think it will be be depending on on you to be honest like what what you like I, I personally like three and two um and I think like the continuous spell is a really good grind game in my in my opinion because you bring back a level two at any point right so um yeah so so that's the thing and another thing about the sprite deck I think that it's also really really important that uh, people need to understand is that it is like stuff like the enchantress stuff right so let me explain personally my fit my my opinion on the brave yeah yeah brave brave sprite okay L let me explain my opinion on brave sprite um actually like this uh blue i guess so my, my opinion on brave sprite is this okay Personally, I think Sprite is not a deck. It's not a combo deck. And, and what I mean by that is that it's not a deck that's designed to push through interactions. It's a deck that's designed to eat interactions. And what I mean by that is like hand trap interactions, right? So, so like, I personally don't like the Brave Engine because the Brave Engine is designed to play through interruptions. Like, it, it, it's not really designed to... Um, you know, eat the interactions and then go forward, right? So, that's why, like, I don't really like it. But there are certain interactions about the Brave Sprite deck that's broken. And I'll explain to you some of them, okay? Let's say this happens, okay? Um, let me explain this. So, you're going second into a board, okay? This has happened, and I actually won because my opponent didn't see this line. But you go something like... You go something like Rite of Our Major, you summon a token... Uh, you have Faithful Venture, right? Then you go Normal Summon Swap. Obviously, you can't use the effect. Then you'll go, like, Faithful Venture effect, grab a, uh, grab a, uh, Draco back, okay? Pretend you have, pretend this is Draco back. I'm sorry, I forgot to add it in. Um, then at some point, what ends up happening is, uh, your opponent, like, you know, let's say they use Stapelia. You play against, like, Tears. They Stapelia your Frog. It's a level one now, okay? Which is absolutely correct. Um, what you can do is you can go like swap frog effect, add this back to your hand, then use effect of faithful adventure to get, um, enchantress, pitch the, um, pitch the Draco back, re-equip the Draco back, Draco back, force out another interaction from your opponent, and then you can go swap effect, send enchantress to the graveyard, then go swap effect. And that's a really, really cool interaction that you can do with the brave... Um, the Brave Sprite deck with, with Swap Frog. That, that it's super, like, not obvious. Because, I, like, I literally played someone playing this and the, he did not see this line. If he saw this line, I would have lost. It's actually crazy. But he didn't see this line. He added Griffin instead and, and passed on Griffin. And I won because of it. Um, but, but that, this interaction is, like, really, really insane. Um, can you bounce a Swap under right? Oh, wait. No, no, I can't. No, no, no. Sorry. Oh, I messed up. I messed up. Sorry, 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 sorry. No, no, no. Let me explain it again. Hold on, hold on. This is this is this is when you go swap pitch. You go swap pitch enchantress, swap effect. It gets the Pelia. Sorry, sorry. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. I totally forgot. Right. So let me explain again. Let me explain again. My bad. I, I totally just blanked out. Um, it comes up like this. This is the interaction that comes up. Wait, wait one second. Sorry. Legal cheating. No, 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 no. What came? No, no. This is what happened. You go swap pitch enchantress, swap effect. This gets the Pelia. Okay. This gets the Pelia. And then afterwards, you go Enchantress Effect, grab rights. Sorry, almost almost the same thing. Almost the same thing. I, I just... Well, it's not the same thing. One is illegal. Um, then you go... Then you go Rights of Our Major. Activate this. Then you get this. You get the... um, You get this. Right? Same same concept. You can then swap this back to your hand. Um, activate the effect of this. Search Enchantress. Search Enchantress. Let me see. One second. Where, where is it? Where's my enchantress? Okay, search enchantress. Pitch a card from my hand. And then do the same thing. And then go chain link one swap frog, chain link two faithful adventure. Okay. Um Yeah, and you would you would be playing plague, yeah. And then you grab Draco back that I mentioned before. And then swap frog effect will get to uh trigger again, right? Um and for for some reason, um swap frog is like once per turn per copy. It's like not once per turn. It's like literally so broken, but, uh, but anyways, you, 
so you can trigger the effect of so far again to send now you can send your ronin and now you have an extra level two in the board and then you can like play through the sapelia that way so it like like swap frog pitch enchantress literally feels like you're cheating it literally feels like you're cheating no cap that that's what, like that's like the only interaction i would say that like oh maybe like maybe makes the deck kind of broken but like i never liked the brave engine with the sprite stuff because of the the, the theory that I think the spread deck is designed to eat hand traps and like have your opponent hand trap you constantly and still end on interactions instead of a deck that like pushes through all your opponent's hand traps, if that makes sense. Like, it's not like a Danger Thunder deck. It's not like a, it's like, you know, it's not like those type of decks. It's, I, I it's obviously the board feels so broken. Um, but yeah, that's why like, I, but it's like important to know like, oh, like Swap Rock Pitch and Chantress literally, literally feels like you're like like you're cheating, all right. So yeah, that's the that's the thing there. Um, so yeah. So uh, what else is there? Um, oh yeah, there's also like stuff like this that I saw people were playing. Um, Pixies. So there's also like this thing I saw people were playing. So they were playing Pixies, and they played that Gusto Emerald. So this is kind of cool. Um, but basically, you make that Gusto Emerald. Um, you go something like this. Let me show you. <laughs> they go blue jet and then you go jet for starter and you starter summon pixies okay it's it's kind of bootleg but i've seen how it works then you overlay um these two okay and you go effect not the gruesome or the gruesome phoenix and then like you go battle phase you attack with pixie first okay and then afterwards you can go pixie send itself boost that gusto and the gusto will Gains that um, attack and defense until the end of the turn. And then it can attack twice. I don't think it's that good in my opinion. But it's something that you can you should know. Um, for sure. But yeah. The, only, the other thing that I've seen people do is... So if you activate Shifter. If you activate Shifter. Um, if you activate Shifter... One of the things that's really difficult is for you to kill your opponent. So one of the other things I saw people do is something like this, okay? Um, like, they would do something like this, okay? Like, D.Va, summon D.Va. Okay, and they would do this. Literally this. Make Gigantic. Detach. Summon Blue. Uh, blue get Jet. Where's Jetta? And then Jet search Gamma Burst. And, um, and I've also seen this, right? So it's 40. Yeah, and this is also, hold on. So let me, let me, I did my math wrong. Hold on, hold on. So you take 40, 2, 16. And this is a game. No, no, this is game myself too. I mean, you can go Hulk too because it makes your it makes your gigantic uh, an extra. It gives your gigantic to thirty two, so you can do Hulk as well. But I'm saying if if I'm saying like you can just do something as simple as this, and this is game. Um, yeah. Right. So. It, like I've seen people side shifter and side one of this like I'm not even trolling. I've seen that as well Honestly, I don't even think it's that bad. It, it could be worse It could be worse to be honest with you uh, But yeah, so that's another thing you should know about shifter um, Diva by itself kills your opponent to be honest. I mean, I I Love it because plays through super poly. Yeah The other thing that's actually kind of cool too is diva actually kills your opponent after you shifter your, your after you get shifted, Diva by itself actually kills your opponent. Um, and people might not know this too, but you go something like this. Okay. Hulk. Okay, I, I okay another Diva. I'm I'm grabbing from my bench because I forgot. Keck. Overlay. Can take detach. Uh, you summon 
blue jet uh starter you starter for red this is game uh, if you don't if you don't know the ruling on cat shark on on gigantic this becomes 6400 64 12 7, 5 it's 8100 on empty board so that's also another otk line um it's 81 it's it's 564 12 it should be it should be it should be 81 um so that's another thing you should know um if you're playing that version um because i've seen so many people like somehow don't kill me i'll be honest like like people are super misplaying right now because they're still learning the format and the deck like i i would get shifted in my chillman deck and somehow i survive and then the turn after because if you shift your opponent this deck ends on like no interruptions i hope you understand that because if you shift your opponent in sprite you have an urgency to kill your opponent like urgency to kill your opponent because if you don't kill your opponent think about what your deck does nothing your swell frog engine is turned off because it's your own shifter and your smashers doesn't work because you have no sprite card in your graveyard so you only end on red or at best or, or like or something and then if your opponent has five six cards in hand because they have to pass turn they'll kill you 99 percent of the time they'll kill you right like immediately you can also make Zeus. I've seen some people do that. They don't kill you. They make Zeus. But that's so awful in the tier limit. So it makes no sense. Um, like, I, I, they, my, I've played against my opponent who have, like, four Zeus materials. Or two, which is two Zeus triggers. And they just die as well. Like, it just doesn't do anything. So, so you have like you have to know how to kill your opponent if you're playing the Div Engine. Um, uh, what else is there? Um, oh, Smashers. So, so, um... Whether or not you play multiple smashers, I so this is a contentious contentious thing. I think maining one siding a second one is actually really good. Um uh just because like against trap decks, you, you want to have multiples of these. And not only one of the things I did that I played against a a pure pure Elich no, no, I play against Elich branded. And one of the ways you can also play around Golden Lord is you search smashers, right? You search smashers. And then you don't set it. So I did this again. And my opponent was like, bro, no, that was kind of that was kind of insane. Like I ended on the, the, the toad board with elf and I didn't set my smashers to play around Golden Lord. Um and I know like hypothetically Toad can negate Lord effect to send, but then that's so bad. Right? And, and, and so I don't set my smashers and I use the next turn to actually win to out his floodgate. Um and yeah. So that's that's the thing as well. So sometimes like you can choose not to set smash if you play against like the trap decks. There's also the consideration. Um that's just insanely ass. I don't know. I, I think it's actually I think it's good because if your opponent's playing branded Elich and you go, and you have to negate Lord Effect to send, then their branded fusion will resolve because they have no monsters on the field, so you don't get to bring back totally awesome to also negate their branded fusion. So it's like not like I, I don't think it's that good. And then like and that's why, like, I don't, I don't think it's that good in my opinion. Um, I, that's why I think like it's better to not set it, because then what are they gonna do? They're gonna lord your, your elf, I guess, or something. Um, I don't know. It's just something to think about. Uh, what else is there? Um, they get Lubellion, bro. They get F Born Toad. They summon. Wait, they getting Lubellion? Yeah, there, there's some, yeah, you can do that too. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I've seen people play is uh, Nemesis Flag and his Shatos. So maybe that's another consideration. Yeah, that was that was another cool thing. Um, I don't think this is good because I think you get locked way too early. But some people are playing this. I think this is not good, but I guess you can be aware of it. There's like Nemesis Flag and his Shatos. They <laughs> so Flag is a level two. Um, and you can just go like normal summon Flag. Effect search as Shatos. I've seen people try this. I think it's ass. Like, <laughs> because, like, you have to just normal summon flag. Because there's not really a lot of good ways for you to get, like, a level 2 that's banish. So you never actually get to special this. And then search as Shatos. And by the time you get to... By the time, like, you do get a card banish, like, off Ronin Tonin. Um, you're a shot... Like, you're, you're going to be locked. 
you know so yeah it's, it's i don't think it's that good um but yeah i hope that uh helps you guys determine a little bit more things you should know about the spread deck and some text um yeah the only other thing that is available is like the punk variant but i personally don't think the punk variant is that good because you add more bricks to your deck i think the teleport i think teleport is a powerful ass card to summon gamma though because i think like being able to summon a bunch of level twos is actually so insane all right if you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Let me guys know your thoughts below. Good luck this weekend, guys. Let me know how you guys do. Peace.